Known as the Forgotten Coast, Mexico Beach, Florida is a small coastal community nestled between Panama City and Port St. Joe. This quaint little town of 800 residents is known for several very special qualities. This quiet, relaxing town boasts some of the most tranquil and pristine beaches anywhere in Florida. There are over three miles of breathtaking coastline, which is accessible to everyone. Visitors can drive right up to the beach, park their car, and walk 100 feet to the beach. Whether kayaking, swimming, fishing, or surfing, the beaches are readily available for visitors of all ages. Aiding in the fishing and diving, a new free public boat ramp was constructed, allowing for easy launching of your boat. This new ramp can handle up to three boats at a time, and there is always plenty of free parking for trucks and trailers. Mexico Beach's unique location has easy access to the Gulf of Mexico, with the use of a canal going right into the heart of the city. This canal allows boats of all sizes to stock up and be in the water in no time. There is a full-service marina located in the canal, with plenty of places to moor your boat for a day, a week, or even a year. No fishing destination would be complete without a family fishing pier for those hardcore anglers who are without a boat. Extending out over 800 feet into the Gulf, this pier has plenty of room to land fish of all sizes. Mexico Beach is truly a sportsman paradise. Along with being a premier fishing destination, there are hundreds of reefs that provide divers with endless underwater seascapes. The Mexico Beach Artificial Reef Association has been building artificial reefs in this area since 1997 and has built over 125 new reefs using old shrimp boats, barges, concrete rubble, pyramids, and reef maker modules. Inshore and offshore reefs have been spread out all over the area, making the waters around Mexico Beach one of a kind. One of the more important missions for the MBARA is the research of artificial reefs and their impact on the marine environment. This entails the investigation of artificial reef designs and materials. Which materials are most effective at providing habitat for fish and other marine species? Which configurations provide the most cover and substrate? I think that one of the things that makes us all excited about down here is just Mexico Beach. I mean, if you, you know, I've been coming down here for 40 years, and to me, this is, this is a little slice of paradise. And, and we are trying to keep it that way. And with the MBARA, we're trying to build more reefs and make it special and make it, you know, where there's a lot of things you can do here. You can snorkel and you can dive and you can fish. But I, I guess I'd like to say that if people would, would come down here and, and have an interest in, in the community and, and, and contribute, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to give to this community and contribute and, and do things for the community. And it's growing all the time. I see development all around us all the time, but it's still one of the nicest, greatest little places on the face of the earth. And if they come down here and want to get involved, we're an organization they can become a part of, and we have room for volunteers in every area. And we're trying to contribute to this area because this is a very special area. It really is, I think, uh, one of the neatest places in the state of Florida to come and visit and stay and just fish and have fun. Part of the mission of the MBARA is to construct artificial reef habitats to enhance sustainable fisheries in the waters of the Gulf of Mexico. The MBARA set a milestone of establishing 1,000 patch reefs or small artificial reef habitats in the waters off Mexico Beach, Florida. Working closely with the City of Mexico Beach, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission, and the United States Army Corps of Engineers, the MBARA is well on the road to achieving that milestone. It's the efforts of these reefs and the MBARA that have made this area a premier sportsman's destination.
The, the NBA RA Kingfish Tournament is probably one of the most exciting, fun things that we do. And in fact, I like to tell people this is not a fishing tournament. I actually tell people this is not a fishing tournament. This is a celebration of life. We are having fun. This is not your typical fishing tournament. We have a huge party on Friday afternoon called the Captain's Party. People get together, old friends that hadn't seen each other for a year get together, they sit around. We have this big NBA RA cooking team that comes to town and they cook Louisiana sausages that we bring over. We have door prizes that we give out. We have a Miss Kingfish that comes over. Um, we have registration that night. We have the Budweiser wagon that comes over. It's a fun time. People seeing people they haven't seen for years. And then we move it over to Saturday afternoon where we have the weigh-in from one to five down at Marquardt's Marina and we have a big party there going on. We have food, we have drink, and we have Miss Kingfish in a bikini, and we got guys wanting their picture with Miss Kingfish and hanging fish. The main objective is to make everybody have fun and make it a lot of fun and a family experience and everybody have a great time. It's not so much to try and be the biggest tournament. That's not our goal. Our tournament, our, our objective is to have the best tournament and make it the most fun. And we, we think we've done that pretty well. Now, once a year, this rather quiet coastal community comes to life the weekend before Labor Day with the annual Kingfish Tournament, sponsored by the Mexico Beach Artificial Reef Association. The event has grown tremendously over the years and provides an annual revenue source for building reefs in the area. The annual tournament brings in people from all over Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, and of course from right here in Mexico Beach. We took a minute to talk to some of the captains to see what draws them here year after year. Listen, you fish all around. What brings you to the Mexico Beach Kingfish Tournament? Well, this is a great location. The camaraderie of the people is well organized and it's just a lot of fun for a one day tournament. Well, have fun. All right, buddy. Thank you. Anyway, he deserves to have a little something there. Well, welcome back to the Kingfish Tournament. It's good to be here again. We, we come here every year, and it's always a good turnout. And Well, we hope to have another good year this year. Thanks for coming. If you guys need pavers or anything, Kilgore's does an awesome job. We want to uh, support our local community in any way we can. Thank you, guys. 
I'm here with Mr. Bill Cranford. He was the first president of the NBRA. He actually ran it for two years before somebody else took over. Mr. Bill, I uh, don't know if we'd have had this organization without you. Um, glad to see you back. Uh, any advice for the anglers tomorrow? Well, the only thing I know is just find those big, big kings out there somewhere. They're out there. You just got to find them. <laughs> also, I want to say that Ron has done a great job for this organization since he took over. Uh, it's fantastic. It, it's built quite a bit from the first time that we had a we had our tournaments here. Uh, Chip Blackburn has, has been a, a, a he, he's, he's been big in this in this organization ever since it started. Too. Uh, we didn't know what we were doing when we first started. Uh, we built some reefs out there and. and we didn't know we didn't know how to build one so anyway it was we did what we thought was good so anyway since that time it really expanded we appreciate all you've done and what you continue to do thank you very much what keeps bringing you guys back to this kingfish tournament every year let's go beach and the people here it's a fantastic time great people can't beat what's your favorite thing about mexico beach Water right out there. It sure is pretty. Amen. Thanks for coming, guys. Good luck. The highlight of the tournament weekend is the captain's party held beachside at the El Governor Motel. Every year, the crowd gets bigger and bigger, and this year's turnout didn't disappoint. It's hard to say which brings in more people for the captain's party, the free food or the massive amount of quality door prizes. The cooking team has the daunting task of feeding these large crowds and has done such a great job over the years. The anglers have come to expect a certain level of quality. Tell me a little bit about the flavors this year. You need to be the man right here. Well, man, you're part of the team, Harry. I know you do a lot of work every year. Uh, what's your favorite flavor? Um, green onion. Any new flavors this year? Um, which one? Jalapeno chicken. Oh, sorry, man. Jalapeno cheese. Jalapeno cheese from Georgia. Yeah. Georgia told me. Yeah. Salt and lick. Salt and lick. Salt and We got. Cajun mild, Cajun hot, Cajun double hot, double X. Uh, smoked, we had some new, that smoked from New York. Uh, I don't know what flavor it was, the Cajun was not very hot. Uh, How much sausage y'all cooking this year? 900 pounds. 900 pounds. 580 and 250. Yeah. <laughs> What better way to feed the masses than with some good old Cajun-style sausage? Choices are what this team is all about. No store-bought links here. These guys are making it from scratch and doing it the right way. Welcome back. I'm here with Skeeter, who makes the uh, sausage. He, he, he makes it work every year, guys. Uh, he's a hard worker, and he's going to describe to you all the flavors which make it so good. Well, we got right here, we got Cajun Triple Hot. That's a, that is really hot stuff right there. You don't eat many of those. Here we've got a new one this year. It's from the Salt Lick Sausage Company in Warwick, Georgia. They donated a bunch of sausage to us this year. This is the jalapeno and cheese. This right here, we've got the Cajun hot. That's just kind of hot. This right here is chicken jalapeno. We've got mild Cajun. we got the Salt Lick medium sausage. we got smoked Cajun sausage. And down here on the end, I see it's here. This is the green onion sauce. This is one of our biggest hits right here. As the chief cook, what's your favorite? Uh, as of this year, probably that jalapeno cheese. One of my favorites. <laughs> That's good. Thank you for all that you do. Okay. Thank you. Kimberly, it's been a busy year, it seems like. I'm in real estate. I know you, you bring the people down. And how's tourism looking this year? Tourism this year has been up. It's been positive. We've seen those who came last year coming back and we've seen new faces on our beach so it's only going up from here we're all excited about this keep up the good work thank you 
As with any great event, the sponsors are what truly make it successful. These sponsors donate their time and money to ensure the tournament is a hit. The MBARA Kingfish Tournament gives away door prizes valued in the thousands. It's this type of sponsor support that makes this tournament one of a kind. Almost everyone wins something, and these door prizes are top notch. The tournament is open to anglers of all ages, and teams register by the boat, making this a competitive but family-friendly tournament. There are only three categories, kingfish, wahoo, and Spanish mackerel, so anglers must focus in on a limited amount of species, making it that much more competitive. I'm here with Miss Carol Cox, who is a vital part of the NBARA and what they do. Can you tell us a little bit about the reefs you guys are putting down right now? Um, we've got three kind of reefs that we put out right now. We put out the, the pyramids, and we put out what's called a grouper module, which is kind of a flat rectangular structure. And then we're also putting out a new system called an ecosystem. And that one's really doing some great stuff for us out there right now. What kind of fish life are you seeing on that? Okay, the ecosystem, let me describe it first. It's kind of like a layer cake, but there's some spaces between the layers. And we're seeing a lot of juveniles, but the other thing that's really surprising here is we've seen more black um, sea bass than we have ever seen before on these things. And some of them, there's, you know, we see two or three dozen black sea bass, bass on one ecosystem. That, that's pretty, that's a good sign that those are coming over this way. <laughs> it is, it is, because diving, we used to see them a lot over um, at the limestone ledges off of Apalachicola and all, and we would rarely, rarely ever see one here. And now then, they are starting to show up in numbers. We've heard some good things from some of the charter fishermen that have been hitting them and saying their customers are really happy about that. Now, there's a reef you guys dropped less than a year ago that's already showing a lot of promise. Tell me a little bit about that. We dropped a 57-foot concrete sailboat less than a year ago. And we dived it shortly after, did not see a single fish. We just went there recently, and it would get dark on the bottom because there was so much fish life surrounding that that artificial reef now. Mostly bait fish like um, the cigar minnows and the tom tates, but there's tons of um, jacks coming in, the blue runners, small amber jacks and all. But the really exciting thing is, is there's a lot of young gag groupers on there. In two or three years, that thing's going to be producing some really nice keeper gags. Now, Miss Carol, it still confuses a lot of people. What's the difference between a king and a Spanish mackerel? That's confused a lot of people, and we've had a few fishermen embarrassed at our weigh-ins, but on the king, I'm one of them. <laughs> yeah. On the king mackerel, if you lift up the dorsal fin, it's going to be all pale gray. Spanish mackerel, if you lift up the dorsal fin, there's definitely a dark flat, black area. They call it the black flag. That's awesome. Keep up all the good work. Thank you very much, Zach. Fun, food, and a ton of free prizes. It all goes to help raise money for the MBARA. The captains and teams all showed up ready to fish, and although the forecast during the event seems to be a little discouraging, these anglers are still confident that they can catch fish and come home winners. I'm here with Andrew, captain of Team Samantha Grace. Y'all put some big fish on the board in the years past. So how big of a fish is it gonna take this year? Well, we're gonna try. Uh, it's gonna be a little rough. We're gonna run out, see what we can do with them. You know, good live bait, maybe do some trolling. But uh, we're gonna see what we can do and maybe bring fish, big fish to the board this year. How big is it gonna take? This year, with the way it is, it's probably gonna take at least a 40. 
It's going to take a 40 45, I think. I don't know. Good luck, you guys, Andrew. All right, man. Thanks, Zach. Welcome back to the 2011 NBA. but everybody will have big time. Thanks, Tom. Welcome back. I'm here again with Allison. Allison, you know a lot about Mary Tell us a little bit about why it's so important to you and the Kingfish Tree. Well, let me start out by saying that recreational fishing is a $5 billion a year industry. I know it's unbelievable, but it's true, and it helps create thousands of jobs each year throughout the state of Florida. Um, Mexico Beach Artificial Reef, Reef Association contributes to this, and it's a wonderful organization because it helps, or it uses volunteer work to help promote a sustainable marine ecosystem, not only to provide healthy habitats for the fish, but also to help create a wonderful fishing experience for the saltwater animals. Um, this is a very informed Miss Kingfish people. <laughs> it was created in 1997, and since then, we have uh, raised over $1 million, and we have also helped create almost 200 artificial reefs. Not only do we create artificial reefs, but we help conduct research on our reefs to ensure that the sea life is thriving. All the while educating the public through our website um, and our monthly editorial. So check us out at embarra.org or through our Facebook page. This is Allison Pugh, your 2011 Miss Kingfish, and I think the new spokesman. Thank you, Allison. <laughs> Thank you. Here with City Manager Chris Hubbard. Hubbard, how big is a fish it's going to take to win tomorrow? 36. Yeah, that's probably about right. Yeah, we hope that, uh, you know, hopefully the weather will stay good here and uh, people can actually get out and, and do the fishing. Um, <laughs> you know, we thought it was going to be great, and now it sounds like three to five, so, you know, hopefully it won't get any worse than that. That's pretty rough, but uh, these are tough anglers. I think they'll, they'll bring in some good fish. Well, you're going out there, so I expect you to lead the pack out. We pick you up at six, hubby. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I won't be ready, but you can come pick me up. <laughs> Thanks, hub. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Folks, we've got a rare sight. We've got Ike Godwin out.
bait fishing's been really bad all week. Uh, high pressure built in over us two days ago. I don't know. Just it's gonna be whoever gets the, the man that gets the lucky bite and manages to get him get him to the boat successfully and get him in the boat. And that's you know that's what it's gonna take. You know, hopefully you know we get the bite tomorrow. You know we're we're a man short this year. Uh, one of our friends is has bow out, so it's, we're a two man team. How far out you gonna try to go this year? Probably around 40 miles, 45 ish. Where you know we're fishing back west of here, so we're we're gonna hope for the best and expect the worst. <laughs> Guys, you know how to catch the big fish. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here with my buddy, Sean Hudson. Sean is not only a good king fisherman, but he's known for catching big wahoo. I don't know how he does it, but uh, every year he comes in with a big wahoo. Uh, what's it going to take to win it this year? Wahoo's going to take about 60 pounds. You going to catch him? I hope so. Now, uh, some people know about these secret lures you've got. You want to mention anything about those? Uh, negative ghost rider. I don't know what you're talking about, no secret lures. Good luck tomorrow, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. I'm here with Winston Chester, who has a wonderful TV show, Panhandle Outdoors. Mr. Winston, we're glad to have you fishing in the tournament. Uh, tell us a little bit about your show and uh, what you think it's going to take to win tomorrow. Well, two things. Uh, the show itself, it comes on uh, live every morning. It's part of the only live outdoor TV show. It comes 530 on Fox 28. We love doing it. Just have a great audience at uh Love this kind of stuff, and I'm thinking. I, two weeks ago, I fished in Carabell with a Panhandle Outdoor fishing team. And we won it. That's that the was, rumor. <laughs> that was, we won it, and uh, we're on a roll right now. We have 42.9. I'm thinking uh, 30. I'm thinking 35, 36 might win this. Look, 41 last year. What do you? Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm saying 36. With these conditions, I'd feel good with a 36 pounder. Well, you know, I've already looked around. You got some good fishermen here. I, I recognize you. You know, you always have this nucleus, this hardcore group of fishermen. And I've already seen some of them, and uh, they're good fishermen. Well, good luck. All right. Thanks, Zach. I'm here with my buddy Chad, who served in the Army. We're glad to have him in Mexico Beach now. He's a great fisherman. Chad, how big of a fish is it going to take tomorrow? I want to say 35 pounds or bigger. Go dog. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thanks, Chad. <laughs> Jimmy Nicholson is another excellent fisherman, scuba diver, and he likes eating, too. Jimmy, what's your favorite flavor? Jalapeno chicken. Seems to be a good one. How big of a fish is it going to take tomorrow? 42 pounds. You going to catch him? You better believe it. <laughs> good luck, Jimmy. Thanks, Zach. Uh, Zach appreciate it. It would not be a Kingfish tournament without Steve Newman and Team Big Fish. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> yes. <laughs> good to see you back. I think you fished in every one of these, haven't you? I have. I have not won one yet. <laughs> but I keep plugging away. You realize we're on the same team, so neither of us have ever won this tournament. Exactly, but this will be the year. How are we going to lock up and do something this year? We're going to get on the boat about 10, <laughs> go for about two hours, and come on back in. I think we got a crazy Spanish out there that we accidentally catch that wins it. I'm going for them all. If they're on the buoy line, they're coming home with me. Well, at least we're consistent. Have a good day. <laughs> you too, boss. <laughs> Welcome back to the 2011 NBARA Kingfish Tournament. I'm here with the team Tied In Knots. Guys, welcome back. Uh, how long you been coming here? This is our fourth year. How big of a fish is it going to take to win it this year? 40 pounds. At least 40. I'd probably say 45 pounds. Y'all got any tricks or tactics you want to share with us of what it's going to take to win it tomorrow? That's a secret. <laughs> Good luck tomorrow, guys. As the captain's party winded down, these anglers are ready for the day ahead. The morning came quickly, and the boat ramp was busy as teams prepared their boats in anticipation for a great day of fishing. The conditions heading out were rough to say the least, but it didn't stop these anglers from searching out their favorite spots. As the day drew on, some teams started to head in to weigh their catch. Despite the weather, the crowd started to show up at official weigh scale. The leaderboard got an early start as anglers weighed in some respectful weights early in the day. Mexico Beach is awesome.
Slowly but surely, the team started to show up with some big smiles and some healthy fish. Plenty of Spanish and kings were put on the scale. And as you can see, the weather didn't hinder these fishermen from catching plenty of quality fish. Team Gag Reflect showed up to the scale with a board changer and weighed in this beautiful 44.95 pound kingfish and jumped into the lead. If this king holds up, it will be the second year in a row that Team Gag Reflex has taken the top prize. There was only one small wahoo on the board until Captain Alexander Judd and Team Illustrious threw up a nice specimen, putting them in the lead with a 53.15 pound wahoo. More and more anglers showed up as the day grew longer but the board didn't change until Team Bobcat weighed in a 30 pound kingfish and jumped into third place. In the final few minutes of the tournament, Team Flippin' Out, captained by Jackson Krause, brought in a king that looked like it could possibly take the lead. The crowd watched as the fish went on the scale. 30.8 pounds, and the crowd went wild. That fish put Jackson and his team in second place and made the last few minutes of the tournament extremely exciting. Congratulations to all the teams and anglers for making this year's tournament a success. Here are the final results for the 15th annual MBARA Kingfish Tournament. If you would like more information about the MBARA, please visit our website at www.mbara.org.